Hey everybody, Jim Chester here with John Petrick. We are coming to you live from Reno, Nevada. This is Chiropractic Rocks. And before we get started, I just want to say a big thank you to Dr. Adam Del Tordo for bringing all of us together for this amazing event. Um, hands down, one of the greatest chiropractic seminars that's just getting started, but we're going right to the top with this one. Uh, Dr. John Petrick here, uh, I'm just going to ask him a couple questions, but he came out here from Las Vegas, Nevada, and he's going to just share some of his chiropractic truth with us. And uh, he's doing some amazing stuff out here too. So welcome to the show, Man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm a big fan of yours, so I'm glad that we're here. I'm glad to be on the show. This is interesting, and I, uh, I'm glad that you're here. And we had talked about this just briefly, even before we came on, of how important it is to document chiropractic, not only uh, for present, but for future generations. People need to hear these stories. They need to know about these speakers, and it's, it's people like you and I and what we're doing in our message and trying to capture it. Amen. Just think about this. Just think about this. In the early 1970s, we're still using one of these cameras to kind of chart the message. And we had people like B.J. Palmer and, and, and D.D. Palmer and all these great people even prior to that where there's no documentation. So what you're doing is creating micro time capsules for the rest of the world to see at a future generation. So thank you for doing what you do. I appreciate it. And thanks for having me on the show. Hey, you know, for me, it's just a huge honor to be able to keep the truth of chiropractic alive and well for so many people that need it. And most people just don't know where to go or who to trust. I know you've been doing some really amazing work. You, you were on re reality TV for a while. Let's talk about that experience. Well, uh, I'm sure I hope everybody's heard of Dana White. Uh, bald guy, not Mr. Clean, but he uh, actually, Dana was uh, living in Las Vegas right around the time I moved there in 1999. Dana at that time was just a boxing coach. I was just a young, broke chiropractor, almost living out of my car. And Dana was just a star aspiring kind of a little bit, if you will, a boxing coach. So as his star rose, he kind of jumped into the, with the Fertitas and he picked up an organization called the UFC. You may have heard of it. Um, a few years later, uh, not necessarily through some connections, a gentleman by the name of Frank Mir, who was a heavyweight fighter, he had to quit the league because he was in a uh, motorcycle accident. And he couldn't use his arm. He was doing one of these numbers. And he had come in with another fighter. And not necessarily arrogance, but confidence. I said to him, if you come in as a patient, we'll put you back fighting. And, he, and I said, if I can't, don't pay me. I, I kind of threw it out there and was really worried that, you know, okay, boom. And he was big. So if I didn't fix him, then I was worried that it was just like, this is going to be a serious deal. This was a throwdown. And he took the challenge and he came in and I helped him. And at that time, he got picked up to be on a TV show called The Ultimate Fighter. And it was 12 years ago that I had actually been on the show and I had stayed steady on the show. I was the only chiropractic physician on the uh, Ultimate Fighter TV show. So I treated about over 4,300 professional athletes in and around the UFC. Uh, not just the UFC, there's other divisions like Bellator and Pride and uh, Ultimate Fighting uh, Championship was just one of them. So I worked for Zufa, which is the production company for the UFC for 12 years. Uh, we did 42 on-air interviews uh, where they actually interviewed me and uh, they keep the ugly people in the back so you very <laughs> seldom saw me on the show uh, but uh, we did we on there we uh, we did some craniofacial release Adams technique which really is uh, is an interesting piece because how I got into craniofacial release was my fighters were taking shots to the head and if you don't know this there's 22 bones in the skull and they're all supposed to kind of move around independently and if they don't the first piece that's missing is respiration and inspiration and expiration. Your skull's not moving. Your frontal bone, your occipital bone, your parietal bones, they're all supposed to move when you breathe. When my fighters, when my fighters were taking these hits, and we're not talking just in the fights, we're talking at practice. These guys are getting their bells rung. They're constantly, going home constantly. constantly, all the time. And they're coming back, and I was noticing that their ability to function, we started looking at things like CO2, we started looking at oxygen levels. Over time, the chronic nature of the amounts of blows to their head was lowering their ability to recover from injury. So you ever hold the old saying that he got knocked out once, he gets knocked out easy again? Chuck Liddell, prime example. When Rashad, it was a fight, long time ago, Rashad hits him like he thought his head came off. Reality was every time Chuck fights after, what happens? The end result is Chuck's on the floor. Why? Because for years, Chuck was unbeatable. He could, nobody could touch him. And then all of a sudden, he got knocked out one time, Rashad Evans, and now every other time, it's easier. My philosophy and theory was it had to do something with the plates not being able to move during breathing. And it was literally affecting the brain. So when I found Dr. Adam and he said, hey, I got this technique and trust me, 
your skull's gonna move after I balloon you. <laughs> and that was actually what it's designed. So just like anywhere in the body, a scar is where the fibroblasts and all the tissue start to adhere and stick. I like to describe this where it's a paintbrush with the paint left in the bristles. It's supposed to be able to move and it just doesn't. So the interesting thing is in the skull, it's not moving. And if you ever want to check out a really awesome pod, a, a, a movie, a, a clip, check out UFC Uriah, Uriah Faber. And we ballooned him on the set and ballooned Uriah. It was a unique experience how he was. We, we wondered how tough the UFC fighters really were after we seen Uriah. But anyhow, we ballooned Uriah on the set. Uh, and actually what I started noticing is my fighters started to report various different things happening. They're saying, hey, you know what? In the third round, I'm not tired. In the third round, I can hear my coach and understand the instructions. So what this was telling me was that something was affecting oxygen. And the cool thing about it was that when you get oxygen to the brain, you're going to more acuity, more clear. And what ultimately, and, and when people ask me about training, and I say, these MMA guys train at a whole different level. Mm -hmm. Now, to describe this level. Constant trauma. Let, let, let me explain to you how, when, what I say is tired. When you are so tired from training so hard that you won't lift your hands from here to here to block a punch, that's tired, right? And these guys do this every day, five, six days a week. They're coming and they're coming and bringing it all out. And these skulls aren't resonating, right? So these skulls aren't moving. So when I started ballooning them on the show, we had such a profound impact that these fighters were telling me, Dr. Petrick, I can hear my coaches. When they tell me three, typically coaches are supposed to give three instructions in between rounds because you cognitively the fighter's not going to catch it. These guys are now on the set. Now they're in the fight and they're sitting down. They're in the, in the corner and now they're hearing their coaches. So that means they can apply it. So now when they go back out and he says throw a combo, they're remembering what combo and they're not just out there flinging punches. So that was the first. Uh, Before you keep going, sure. but one of the things is that what he's saying is that chiropractic is a brain game. It's not just a pain game. And when we can get an impact on the brain game, now we can make an impact on the pain game because guys are taking less blows. So now you're bringing it all together. What you just did right there was called body and mind. And you just brought it together because when the mind was effective, it kept the body from being in pain. So that's really, really, that's a great point. That's a really great point. Um, so, so for 12 years, I've been uh, on the TV show. I worked for the Toronto Blue Jays at, at, with the 51s in Vegas. Um, right after, uh, the, the show ended in June. They kind of pulled the rug out from us. Uh, uh, here's the interesting thing about chiropractic. Let me throw this out there. All right, I, I think this is kind of cool. Chiropractors, if people don't know this, I think it was Dee Dee or B.G. Palmer was the first ones to have a, a radio show. Did you guys know this? B.J. Palmer actually hired Ronald Reagan. Okay, right? So you think of it this way. So <laughs> chiropractors kind of show up in the most strange places. So one day when I'm taking my little box of tools that I had on the, the chiropractic show and I'm leaving, one of the guys on the crew came up and they go, Dr. Patrick, man, we're going to miss you. It's so great to have you on here. And they go, but you should feel good. And I go, why? He goes, well, you have been the longest running cast member on a reality show ever <laughs> so I, I looked at him when he said that and I went my first like like I'm sure like everybody out there watching the first thing you're saying is how much did they pay him for that <laughs> and the answer was nothing I didn't get a penny for being the longest acting cast member on a reality show ever and I didn't even get an award but it was cool that the longest member of an, a reality show is a chiropractor you. is a chiropractor right <laughs> me, me, not just me but I'm saying chiropractic shows up in various crazy places and and we did so uh, there's more stuff to come once we ended the show I ended up with my own TV show we film it stitched at the Cosmopolitan in a men's clothery they're the number one uh, they closed Bryce Harper when he was the best dressed man in Major League Baseball so you look up stitched life uh, I mean we're talking really really great suits uh, we're the only one with a TV show on the strip right now in the Las Vegas Strip, a chiropractor with a TV show. Not Siegfried and Roy, not Tim, you know, uh, you know, Adam Sandler, none of those guys, but a chiropractor, right? So we were doing that. We travel all over the country, and the, our show is on health and wealth. It does have a chiropractic little spin to it, but it's health and wealth, okay? We've had presidents of major corporations uh, like uh, Doug Arquette who was once the, uh, one of the main guys in Goldman Sachs, and he comes on and he teaches people about premium financing and things like that. Um, and now we came, let's bring it right here to Chiropractic Rocks. Yeah, man, I want to hear about what you're doing here. Okay. <laughs> um, I just mentioned to you and just told you that long story, and I apologize for that, about Dr. Adam Del Torto, who taught me this wonderful skill set. It's kind of hard sometimes when you have a really good friend and then has this great skill set, and he's the guy you, 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 you party with, so you're kind of like, I don't know if I want to take this serious. But when Adam 
had this opportunity and I learned it, I realized that I was in the presence of greatness. And the technique and the skill set has been great and it has allowed me an opportunity to really, to ultimately, again, spend more time on the show and blossom my career and I appreciate it. So when he asked me to come here, we had some other obligations and I said, if we come there, we want to do something different. I said, I'm not coming to receive. I don't want to be a vendor. I love to be a speaker like you asked me to be, which we did. And which was what awesome I, and dynamic, by the way. Like that? Yeah, it was amazing, bro. It was good. It was emotional. I'm just going to tell you, we told an emotional. It wasn't so much of a, it was more of a motivation, emotional. But we came here and what we've decided to do is interview every one of the people here as vendors, as chiropractors, students. Uh, some of these people have leader industries, been in practicing for 40, 50 years. We got to tell their story. We got to record their story. Thank you. Because if we don't, we're going to lose it. And who's going to tell it if they don't? So we came here for free. I know that sounds crazy, but we did. We came here for free. We're giving every one of the vendors a, a reel, which is either a six-minute or a 20-minute uh, reel for them to talk about their product, their service. And what we're doing is we're doing that for Chiropractic Rocks because we want this event to live on long beyond just this first event. And we're going to keep this going all the time. This should be one of the premier events. If you're a chiropractor and you're hearing my message right now, realize this should be one of your premier events. The speakers, the people... And it's not necessarily just a message. What would you guys say? And honestly, I'm going to ask your opinion. The unity, the communication with all the vendors and the doctors and people. We've come together again. This is what we're talking about in chiropractic. This is one of the best events because of the communication and the co cohesive nature of the vendors and the doctors and the speakers. Wouldn't you agree? Well, I'll just clear the record for everybody. Uh, I didn't know who John was uh, until we came in on Wednesday night. And uh, I had a chance to bring my team out here from Grand Junction, Colorado. I saw John sitting in the lobby, and before I knew it, I felt like I knew him. He felt like he knew me, and now we're doing this interview together. And one of the most brilliant things that you're doing is uh, one of my friends, Roberto Monaco, will always say, if we don't tell our story, somebody else will make it up for us. Right, And absolutely. if we don't tell your story, somebody else doesn't know what you're up to and how we're making an impact on the world, whether it's the fighter or whether it's the family of five that need chiropractic care. I think that the level of confusion out there is that chiropractors only help with neck pain and back pain. But you've cleared that up today, and I think that that's the one thing is we are developing a system to transmit the information of what the chiropractic truth is, who it's for, and it's not just about the slip and falls or the car crashes, even though it helps with those type of folks, but really it's about uh, vitality from above, down, inside out. Absolutely. Uh, I, I don't really know how I could say that any better, to be honest with you. I mean, what he said, that's kind of how I would end <laughs> that opportunity. Um, uh, it is. It's, it's not about an individual. It is about the, the community, and that's the greatest thing about it is more a Smurf village, and we got to stick together as Smurfs, and that's kind of one of the interesting things that we're out there. And, and what I mean by that is that if a lot of times I, and I say that Smurf on purpose because I see a lot of chiropractors out there, that what they're doing is they're holding their thumb in their mouth, and they're blowing as hard as they can, and they're saying, you're going to like chiropractic until I'm blue in the face. And the reality is that, you know, you can only do that with the team. You need people. You need these great speakers. Uh, regardless of the message, you know, keep that message chiropractic. It's really what brought us. It's, it's pure. Uh, it doesn't matter what type of practice that you have, whether it be MDDC um, or, you know, straight or active release practice. Just keep the message chiropractic. That's your fallback, and that's where you'll stay safe. Awesome, man. Well, I just want to say thank you for everybody out there that's been watching this interview with John Petrick and myself. Uh, Cairo Hustle is the number one podcast in chiropractic. Please check out the link in the description of this live. Um, please check out Chiropractic Rocks. If you didn't make it here this year, get here next year. And I just want to say... Uh, Santa Monica. I think next year is Santa Monica. Santa Monica, Monica yeah. 2020. Santa Monica Apparel. See you guys there. Um, is it okay if I go and close out? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, man, you guys are just one story away. Keep hustling. I'll see you on the next one. Love you guys.